Well, it's great to be here. Jamie, thank you. I hadn't realized that you were making this transition and change. Thank you for all the great work you've done here at GHTC and best wishes to Jamie on her new adventure going forward. And um, I, I just wanna say to all of you, I'm looking around the room, I see many familiar faces, uh, friends. Uh, thank you for the award, but I really wanted to come here to thank you uh, for all the work you do. Uh, all the partners, all the stakeholders, all the members of GHTC. Uh, because it's what you do in all these fields uh, that does help save lives and make lives better for people around the world. And that's true whether it's developing a drug, a vaccine, or yes, diagnostics, um, and the other instruments and tools that you use uh, to try to make sure that we expand global health and make it more accessible and available uh, to people in all parts of the world. And I just realized that Jamie and I share something in common. Uh, we both grew up in foreign service families. Uh, I grew up in a foreign service family. I was born in Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, we lived in India, Sri Lanka, and Turkey. And I was able to witness firsthand uh, the life-saving work that so many of you do and your predecessors do uh, in terms of developing uh, these important uh, treatments, uh, cures, vaccines. Uh, and diagnostics. And uh, we also can witness as you travel the world, the work we still have to do. And, and this room represents all of that potential uh, to move forward. I may be the only person uh, in the room who actually had malaria. Um, I don't know if there are any others. Uh, okay. So I, I had, I had a, mal I got mal one, two, okay. Malaria as a kid growing up in, in Pakistan, I was about one year old, one year old. I, I had a mild case. Um, I was lucky, of course, I had all the medical treatment I needed. Uh, we've come a long way in helping address, uh, for example, uh, malaria deaths have gone down because of nets and other things, but we also know we have a long way uh, to go. And I see my friend Steve Hoffman here, Dr. Hoffman with Scenaria. Uh, and I, I just met, I just saw Steve coming in. I remember when I was in the House of Representatives many years ago, um, I went to uh, a basement that he was working in. It was a startup. Um, and, you know, there were little like aquarium things with, with mosquitoes in them. Um, he has come a long way, as has the effort uh, to defeat malaria, but we also know we've got a long way to go. And that's just one example of a disease that still uh, plagues of the world where we've had advancements, but we continue to need all your efforts. Uh, and in this room, we have, of course, federal government agencies, um, you know, State Department, AID, I know is here, CDC. Uh, and of course, I am very proud of the role that Maryland plays um, with NIH being, you know, the headquarters of the premier's, the world's premier health uh, research organization, uh, but also so many um, of you in academia also have your homes in Maryland, um, as well as different organizations that work with AID and private sector companies. Um, so for all of the, the, you who are not from Maryland, come on over. We want you in Maryland. <laughs> um, but, but seriously, to all of you, thank you. You're, you're, the, you're the people who you know, can help bring us together uh, to achieve important results for our country, for our own health here, uh, but also for health around the world. Now, COVID uh, was mentioned by Jamie. I think all of us recognize just how important all of you are to this ecosystem uh, in terms of rapidly developing um, you know, COVID vaccines and working to distribute them worldwide. It was far from perfect um, and we need to get better at it. Uh, but uh, one of the things I did focus on in the United States was trying to make sure that we got the vaccines to every single community including so many that were underserved uh, in the past. And of course, globally, we need to work, do better to distribute uh, life-saving uh, treatments and cures to other, other parts of the world, every corner of the world. But, but COVID-19, I think, was an example, um, as imperfect as it was, of the global community working together. Um, and it was an important lesson. Another, of course, hugely successful effort was PEPFAR. Um, and thank all of you who are involved in PEPFAR. And I, I, don't, I don't mean to put that in the past tense, although I think all of you know that we are, we are fighting hard on PEPFAR. I was actually in South Africa uh, earlier this year. I was in South Africa in February this year uh, for the 20th anniversary 
of PEPFAR, uh, which as you know, has saved tens of millions of lives. Um, uh, in fact, 25 million lives um, over that program. The single most, I dare say, successful you know, public global health program uh, ever. Uh, so thank all of you who have been part of it. It is essential that we work to reauthorize uh, that program. And uh, we will continue that battle. In the meantime, we are determined to keep funding uh, the program, but obviously there is greater uncertainty when you don't have it reauthorized. So we, we really do need to get this uh, done uh, together. Uh, and PEPFAR is a great example of what we can do when we put our resources uh, to work. And so I'll just sum up by saying I am pleased to be on the Appropriations Committee. Um, and uh, not only, not only tr using that platform to try to fully fund, for example, our efforts at NIH and all our, you know, all of our health research here at home, uh, but also the research here at home that has a direct benefit uh, to people around the world. And that obviously also accrues to our benefit uh, as well. And so all those global health programs, the, all the, the programs that fall under that umbrella um, are essential uh, that we continue to maintain support for them. So as we go through this budget process, and God knows when it's gonna end, I think all of you know that we're coming back in January and February to a lot of uncertainty. Uh, but one of the things we wanna make sure we do with your help uh, is to make sure that the funds for all of these global health programs um, continue at robust levels. Uh, and that's gonna be a big challenge, uh, given the fact that uh, the top line numbers uh, may, may come down. Uh, a little bit, uh, although we did get a deal supposedly back in the day with the debt ceiling fight with the president, we're gonna determine to keep those, uh, that deal in place in terms of the top line. But uh, I will end with this, and it was probably the wrong thing to say that you wanted to keep the program short and then ask a senator to say a few <laughs> words. Um, but I will end with this. We're gonna need your help to get this done. We really are. And so whatever you can do to reach out to colleagues on both sides of the aisle and both sides of the Capitol is gonna be essential. Let me close where I started, which is just thanking all of you for the work you do, which as you know, every day does save lives and makes people's lives better. Uh, we also know we've got a long way to go uh, to reach the full potential that's represented in this room uh, in terms of global health. So thank you all very much.